Hey everybody, this is Matt Smith, Chief Medical Instructor for Sheepdog Response, uh, coming back with another installment of our video training series for quarantine. So if you're at home and you're in quarantine and you can't get out and train, uh, we're going to continue to put out video content on subjects that you can train on so you can stay sharp. So when we get back together on the range and get out for training, you'll be ready to go. So the subject for today's video is going to be IFAX. We're going to be talking about IFAX. IFAX is an individual first aid kit. The one that I have in my hand here is the Tactical Operator Response Kit. It's a great IFAX. It's available from a company called North American Rescue Products, a very reputable company, one that we uh, deal with. I'm going to talk about the contents of the IFAX, what you should look for in IFAX, a couple different types of IFAX, and then I'm actually going to open this one up and we're going to peel the stuff out, actually open the packages and take a look and see what's in there. So for the folks that don't have an IFAC or you've been assembling your own first aid kit, this will give you some ideas of what you would put in uh, to, a, uh, to a first aid kit that you'd want to use at a range. Now, my recommendation is if you go to the range, you should have one of these. Uh, if you have a family, you should have one of these. And if you have a family and you take that family to the range, you should have one of these. There's no doubt about it. All right, it is one of the best purchases you will make for your life and for your family's lives. So I highly recommend that you get your hands on one, whether you assemble it yourself uh, with all the individual components or whether you purchase one pre-assembled. But I'll tell you some of the things that you need to look for when you buy one that's uh, pre-assembled. And uh, with no further ado, let's get into taking this one apart and getting into looking at the contents of the IFAC. So the first thing we look at when we're looking at the IFAC is we're going to open it up and I keep my zippers on the top so that it opens up easily and I always know where the zippers are. All right. So the first thing you're going to notice when you look inside this IFAC is everything's held in place by an elastic retainer band. You want that. You don't want all your stuff to just dump out when you open the bag up. You want to be able to get it to everything and it's organized and convenient. So the first thing you'll notice when you look in here or the first item of equipment that I'm going to draw your attention to is the tourniquet. So if you look at the tourniquet as the way it is in my kit, you'll see. Now when you purchase them from the company, that tourniquet will come in a plastic wrapper. One of the very first things I do when I get it is take that tourniquet out and take that plastic wrapper off because you do not want to have that plastic wrapper on that commercial off the shelf tourniquet that you have in your IFAC. It's just going to slow you down when the time comes and you need to get that thing out. So you want to make sure that you get that plastic wrapper off and that thing is set up in a way so that you can pull it out and put it on in a quick, fast, and in a hurry. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to pull this one out. And so we can talk a little bit about it. All right, this one, this particular one that I have in mind is the CATS tourniquet. Now we sell a CATS tourniquet. CATS tourniquet is a great tourniquet. It stands for the Combat Application Tourniquet. It's a fantastic tourniquet. And one thing you need to know about the CAT tourniquet uh, is if you look at the numbers on the back or if you look at the data that's on the back, you'll see down at the bottom where it says G7. And I'll point to where you can see down here where the G7 is. That G7 denotes that this is generation seven. So the folks at CAT got smart and they started putting generational markings on their tourniquets. That's to let you know that it is the newest generation of tourniquet. So the generation that you should be looking for on your CAT tourniquet is a G7. So if you have an older generation, it might be time to replace it because they periodically make improvements to the stitching and the usability of these tourniquets. And these are great tourniquets, great commercial off the shelf tourniquet. It's not the only company, but CAT is without a doubt the largest supplier of commercial off the shelf, ready-made tourniquets, and they work great. And uh, they're, you should train with it, your family should train with it, and you wanna make sure that when you get one, you get this generation seven one, that's the one to have. So every one of you who has an IFAC or assembles first aid kit needs to make sure that it has a tourniquet. A tourniquet is one of the most valuable pieces of equipment you can have, all right? So this is the CAT Gen 7, and that's what you're looking for. It usually costs about $30, it's about a $30 purchase, anywhere between 25 and 30, if you're getting it much cheaper than that chances are it's a knockoff. So the next thing that you'll see that I'll pull out of the package is an emergency trauma dressing. Almost all of them come with an emergency trauma dressing. So that emergency trauma dressing in this case is the NAR ETD. Okay. It's a six inch emergency trauma dressing. It's sealed in plastic. It's vacuum sealed. So it's nice and compact. You'll see, and it's a great tool to have. So you'll see they got smart. And what they did is 
they marked the opening. So if you see this, the splits on the side here, they are marked with red so that you know where to open. It's on all four corners. It's quick and easy to get to. That way, you know, when you're quick, fast, in a hurry, and you're trying to figure out how to get one of these things open, and it's an emergency situation, you go right to that little split, you grasp it firmly, you peel it apart, and it's gonna open up every time for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this one up, and that way we can all take a look at the contents and talk about the contents and their, the similarities between these and other trauma dressings that you might get. So I'll go ahead and open this one up. And what you'll see is on the inside is the what looks like an ACE type bandage or an elastic type bandage that you might just get at a, uh, at, at a drugstore. And it, it's, it's not much different other than it's got these Velcro closures on them. So they do a good job of putting these Velcro closures on them. You'll see it has a large bandage area on the inside. Obviously that part goes towards the wound. So you, you would put that against the wound. It's very stretchy. So you can, you can create a lot of pressure with it. It's designed to create pressure. You got to remember this bandage part is just for, soaking up blood it's the pressure that you create with this thing that makes it so valuable and these things are really stretchy and so you can create a lot of pressure with them they they have a very intelligent design uh, very easy to use and what i like about them is they've made them easy to close so you can close it you don't need any additional clips or use of any tape it's all set up uh, it rolls up nice and snug and you can see that there's a label on there that tells you other side towards wound. It's, it's for the most part, it's dummy proof. You can't mess it up and it's, uh, it's ready to go right out of the package. Now, the other thing that I love about this thing is, um, if you're like me and you got butter fingers and you tend to, uh, drop your dressings when you pull them out of the package. I mean, they know that you're going to be, uh, amped up if you're having to treat somebody, especially if that somebody is you or somebody in your family, but they very intelligently have added in um, Velcro into the bandage, sewn into the bandage about every eight to 10 inches. That way, as you're, it, just like it is here at the top, used to uh, seal against itself. If you look, about every eight to 10 inches, they put another tiny little piece of Velcro. That way, when you're holding it and you accidentally let go of it, it doesn't roll out into the mud, the dirt, the blood, or all the other things that you don't want to put on your your casualty on somebody who's injured, uh, things that you don't want to introduce. And it's really easy to pull apart, but about every eight to 10 inches, they got this great little uh, Velcro closure. So North American Rescue Products puts that on there. Uh, emergency trauma dressing, some other companies do something similar. So you see that more and more from manufacturers for, for guys like me who are kind of butterfingers and tend to drop dressings. And we all know what it's like when you drop an ACE wrap and it rolls out and then you're stuck trying to wrap it around a wound. These things work very well. They close very easy. That is the emergency trauma dressing from North American Rescue Products. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is gauze. All right, so North American Rescue Products also makes a S-rolled gauze like this. This S-rolled gauze comes in a small package. It's light and, and vacuum packed. And you can see it's about the size of a deck of cards. It's about the thickness of a deck of cards, a little bit smaller. and uh, Vacuum packed, very light. Um, very sturdy and I like that it's actually in two packages. So you're going to see when I open this, there's actually a second package on the inside that uh, that keeps this thing clean and easy to use. Also designed for people like me with butter fingers. Uh, so and to keep it out of dirt, mud, and so that it stays clean for when you need to use it. It is set up similarly to the ETD and that the package has uh, these little red markings. So you can see right where to open it. I'm going to tear it open. And I'm gonna pull it out and you'll see that secondary package. The first thing you'll see is you'll see that secondary package. And you'll notice this big red dot on the top of the secondary package. It's just like a, a, a tissue package that you might have in uh, your bag or your purse. And if you slowly rub your thumb against that and you peel that back, you'll see that this gauze is S rolled in there and it's densely packed gauze. But when you pull it out, it gets very fluffy and there's so much in here. There's an amazing amount of gauze in here and you'll see as it comes out of the package it just keeps coming it's like a magic trick so if you need gauze you need to use gauze to create a bandage or you want to use it to close up a wound you've got all the gauze that you need right and there is a lot in there and once it comes out and it's out in the open environment it becomes very fluffy you can make a fluffy ball you could use it to pack into a wound if you needed to if it was a deep wound you could also use it to i use them to ball up and then i'll place them underneath 
uh, a pressure dressing and that way I can add more pressure to a pressure dressing. Very good piece of equipment and you can see the remainder of it stays inside this plastic portion. All right, the next thing we're gonna pull out is also a gauze. Only this gauze, you'll see is marked quick clot com combat gauze. So if you don't know what combat gauze is, it's actually what they call a hemostatic dressing. So it's gauze, not quite as fluffy as the gauze that we looked at before, but this one is impregnated with a hemostatic agent, a chemical that actually, when it comes in contact with blood, uh, makes it clot. So it'll clot very fast if you use this. This is a very important dressing to have. As a matter of fact, I recommend this to folks all the time. If they're hunting and they're gonna be in a deer stand or if they're gonna be in a remote area, you should absolutely have a hemostatic dressing. It's a, it's a very valuable piece of equipment and one that you should have. All right, it looks very similar to the Z-fold um, gauze that we just looked at. You'll notice a couple differences. It's not quite as fluffy. Um, there's no odor to it. There's no powder in here. Um, it's, it's compact. Um, you can use it just like gauze, but when you put this in direct contact with blood, it will cause the blood to clot and slow down. It will slow down bleeding. It's very effective. Quick Clot is probably the number one uh, manufacturer and distributor of these bandages. But there's a lot out there on the market. You can see they put a split in the package, just like uh, North American Rescue Products does. And if we open it up, and you pull it out it doesn't have that secondary package but you'll see it's z folded just like the other gauze it's a little bit thinner all right no like i said no order no powder very clean and you'll notice that blue stripe running down the center of it that blue stripe is actually a radiopaque stripe that's that's so it, this gets introduced into a wound or if it gets stuck down in a wound uh, later on when that person gets to the hospital they can see it on x-ray and make sure that they get it out of there uh, Real simple, it does cause a clot when it comes in contact with the blood, but when they get to the hospital, you can just rinse it with saline and it'll come right off. So they use these in the OR all the time. Uh, they, so doctors are very familiar with the use of these things. They'll know right away what it is when they see it. Um, they are commercially available, so a lot of people carry them. I highly recommend. If I had to pick uh, the top three pieces of equipment in here, a tourniquet would be number one, and this is an easy number two. You wanna have a hemostatic dressing. Very important to have a hemostatic dressing in your IFAC. You should have one on your person or in an IFAC on your person. It is a quality, quality piece of gear. You want to make sure that you have one. Uh, so the next thing that we'll get out of the uh, out of the IFAC is the chest seals. So the two things you see in these uh in this gray package that I'm pulling out these are chest seals. These are designed if somebody for some reason gets an injury to the chest, a bullet wound to the chest, or a puncture wound to the chest, that you have the capability to seal the wound. So you can see on the package where it says entry and exit wound. So there are two. These come in a pair. These are hyphen vent chest seal twin pack. Okay, so there are two uh, individual dressings, one for an entry wound and one for an exit wound. If you purchase a single uh, hyphen vent uh, make sure that you get a second one because you're going to want one for entry and for exit. Uh, if for some reason a person has multiple uh, penetrating wounds to their chest, uh, you can actually cut these things and use them. Um, uh, but I'll show you inside is a plastic dressing, a very supple plastic, plastic dressing that has a very uh, strong adhesive on it. So you have to be very careful when you open it up that it doesn't stick to your gloves or stick to something else because it will. So I'm just going to open it up at the red tab just like we did before. I'm going to pull it out so you can see. And the first thing you'll notice is that it's very sticky and that, yep, it sticks to just about everything. So you have to be very careful, like I said. All right. They do sell a training one that's a little less adhesive for practicing with, but these real life ones are very adhesive. You'll see this little piece of white gauze. This white piece of gauze is for wiping off the area so that it comes in each one. You take that out. You wipe the skin so it's nice and clean so you get good adhesion with your chest seal, okay? And like I said, you can see it's already sticking to my fingers. It's a it's a, a very good device. This area in the middle here doesn't have adhesive on it, and you can see the areas where it doesn't have adhesive. That's to create a vent. That's why it's called the hyphen vent. It creates a vented area. That way when you stick that right over where the hole is, uh, 
air can't get into the hole, but it can get out of the hole, which is very important. And if you come join us for the TTRC class, we talk quite a bit about that, how to seal up a chest, how to use these type of vents and how to use chest seals. A very important tool to have, very light, very easy to carry. And I'm gonna show you a little trick with getting it off the uh, adhesive backing here in a second. You're gonna wanna pay close attention because these things will often stick to your glove. So all you're gonna do is peel it apart and then begin to slowly pull away the plastic backing. I want you to be very careful and slowly pull it away. Don't pull it off fast, otherwise it tends to stick to itself. But once you pull it and open it all the way up, just open it up until the very ends are still attached. Once you see that the very ends are still attached, that's how I leave it. I don't pull it any further, and then from there, I'll flip it over and I'll place it. That way you get very accurate placement with it and you can pull the rest of the the plastic backing off once it's stuck in place and you don't risk it sticking to itself. Cause like I said, once this thing sticks to itself, it's nearly impossible to get apart and it's, and you're going to waste a chest seal. And remember you, you need two and you want to have two. All right. The next thing I'll show you is this little plastic uh, package that, that I get a lot of questions about um, this little orange thing that comes in. Some of the IFACs is actually an eye cup. It's designed for if a person has an eye injury, and you want to uh, bandage their eye without putting a lot of pressure on the eye, you can use it. Or if you're going to bandage somebody who has a head wound and you want to put a lot of pressure on a head wound, but you don't want to put a lot of pressure on the eye, sensitive organ, the eye, you can use this eye cup to protect their eye. So I get a lot of questions about, hey, Matt, what's that crazy little orange cup that came in my uh, eye fact? That's what that's for. That is an eye cup that's to protect the eye in the event that somebody gets an eye injury or that you just want to protect their eye because you're addressing a head injury. The next thing I'll pull out is one of my favorite tools. These are trauma shears. If you've never seen these before, these are trauma shears. In the military or some of the folks I work with, we typically refer to these things as penny cutters because they're very strong. They will cut through anything and the guys cut through coins. You see this little protective uh, uh, bump on the end? That's the part that goes towards the body and you can cut people's clothing right off. It'll, it's designed to expose wounds. And so you can get to them and you can bandage them if the clothing is in the way. Uh, I get a lot of questions uh, about the different features of this device. One in particular is this small hole that's in the top right here. That's not an accident. That's actually, for folks in EMS will know what that is. That is actually a wrench to turn on an oxygen bottle. So they could put that on the top of an oxygen bottle. If they had it, turn it, and in a pinch, they could use it to turn on O2. Now, you probably won't be using it for that, but that's what it's designed for for folks in EMS. For you, you're just going to want to use them for the cutting uh, uh, feature of them, and they work great. The problem with these, I find typically, is that they're dark in color. Even though they're very hardy, they're dark in color. They will cut through anything. They'll cut through clothing. They'll cut through buttons. They'll cut through zippers. They do a great job. Problem with these things is they're dark, and a lot of times you pull them out of the package, and as soon as you pull them out of the package, you use them once, and you try to put them back in the package, and they don't go back in the package, and you set them down on the ground, and they inadvertently get kicked away, and you never see them again. So my, my advice to you is make sure you keep these. Whenever you're not using them, put them back, either put them back in the IFAC or put them in your pocket. The next item of equipment that I get a lot of questions about is this little brown packet. Matt, what in the world is this little brown pill pack thing that you see? That's actually a pair of what they call the Bear Claw gloves. They're North American Rescue Products and some other companies will vacuum pack a tiny little package of gloves for you to have. And these, this IFAC, these particular IFACs, the ones from, from North American Rescue, come with two sets, a primary and an alternate. But I will tell you, they vacuum seal them almost a little too good or they're packed a little almost too good. So that one of the things I do, as soon as I get my my IFAC from the factory, the first thing I do is take the plastic wrapping off of my tourniquet. The next thing I do is reach in here, pull the gloves out of this brown wrapper and start to pull them apart. Because when you need gloves in a pinch, obviously it is tricky to get these apart. All right, so they will not come apart in a pinch. All right, so I'll take them apart, I'll fluff them up, and then I'll roll them back together, and then I'll stick them back in. I'll tuck them nicely into one of these elastic retainers, right? And then they'll be ready and a lot easier to put on when the time comes. So when you need these things and you need them in a pinch, you can get them out. Now, like I said, there are two in here. So one for you, one for your buddy, or one for you and another to put on once the first one breaks. So the only thing you want to do is make sure that you tuck these things in nice so that they don't get caught in a zipper 
if you're opening and closing your IFAC and they should be good to go for a long time. Uh, yeah, so you get two pairs of gloves. That's what those little brown packages are. They pop out now that I've opened them up. They open up easily and they go on nice and easy. Great pair of gloves. These are nitrile, non-latex gloves. So you don't have to worry about latex allergies or any of that business. Very sturdy. All right, next item of equipment that we're gonna talk about is this thing. Matt, what is that crazy looking green trumpet thing in the package? This is what's known as a nasopharyngeal airway. A nasopharyngeal airway is designed to be inserted into the nose in a person who is unconscious or uh, has an altered level of consciousness and can't control their own airway. So you could put this in, this will slide through the nose to the back of the throat, keeping the airway open so that a person can breathe if they're unconscious. Now, it does require training. Uh, you, do, you do need some additional training to learn how to use this thing. We cover it. We talk about it quite a bit in the tactical trauma response course. I get everybody the chance to uh, go through the motions with this and uh, learn how to use it, when to use it, when not to use it. The most important thing is you know uh, when not to use it. So if you haven't been trained on this thing, I probably wouldn't try to insert it uh, willy-nilly. All right, you, um, but you could go online, you could watch videos, you could join us for the TTRC class, and I promise you'll be uh, well-versed in how to use the NPA, the nasal trumpet, uh, or nasal pharyngeal airway. Uh, they are measure, measured in a measurement called French. This one is 28 French, so the ones that you get in these kits are generally designed for an adult. So this one will go in adult. You see right here where it says 28, that's the size. Um, it is a rubbery, really elastically, uh, kind of uh, springy uh, uh, material, and uh, it works great and if you know how to use it and if you flip it over and you look on the back You'll see that there's a little packet on the back. That is not ketchup. That is actually the lubricant So that is a water-based gel lubricant that you can put on the uh, On the NPA and so it'll slide in a little bit easier You want to make sure that you use a water-based lubricant You can see here where it says 28 French that'll tell you the outside diameter and then all the other uh, information on the package will tell you um, how long it's good for uh, when to replace it and uh, and how much heat it can stand. So if you look on the packaging for most of your medical gear, it'll have a rating on there that'll tell you how hot it can get before it starts to be a problem. So if you look at, a, at your dressing and it doesn't come with that information on it, or if you want to know, hey, I keep this thing in a vehicle, I want to know how good is it or how long is it good for, that information is on medical gear. You just have to look and you'll see a temperature gauge, size, expiration date and you just follow that as long as this thing is clean and sealed in a package it should be good to go it'll last a long long time you want it to be clean all right the last thing we're going to talk about is this little piece of equipment right here and this isn't a controversial little piece of equipment right here if you haven't had training using this piece of equipment you should not attempt to use it this piece of equipment is designed for medical providers you may have gotten one in your ifac uh, you may have gotten one in, in IFAC from us or from another provider. Uh, uh, it is used to decompress the chest. It is a very large bore, long needle in here, um, and it is very sharp. So if you take it out of the package or if you confuse this thing with a marker and you take it out of the package, you're going to be in for a real surprise. So I'm just going to pull the cap off just so you can see. And you will see that is a 14-gauge catheter, very long and very sharp so please be very careful if you did get this i am here to tell you if you're not trained in how to use this um and where to insert it or you have don't have any understanding then when when crisis hits is not the time to learn how to use this thing we talk about it in the tactical trauma response course i i give everybody understanding of what this is but you should know you're supposed to be a licensed medical professional before you stick any sharp thing into anybody um, but some of your kits may come with this device and you should know what it is. Now in the military, they're very versed with this. Even, even, uh, every operator on the street knows what this is and they know how to use it. Um, but, it, for you, I would recommend if you, this came in your kit, just take it out of your kit if you don't know how to use it. And especially to avoid anybody confusing that piece of kit for a marker. I don't want them to open up and think that it's something it's not because it looks like a pin. You'll see the cap looks like a pin. And the reason that is it's designed to, after you use it, you can hang it on somebody's collar. And so it stands out as a warning that you've stuck it in somebody's chest and everybody understands when he gets to the hospital that that person has had a needle stuck in their chest. So please don't confuse this with a marker. Uh, make sure you stay safe. Uh, take it out of the package if you're not going to use it or if you're not trained how to use it. And 
and leave it at that. Um, if you want to know what it is, come join us in the TTRC class. I'll be glad to show you what it is all about. All right. So last couple things we'll cover uh, before we wrap it up is different types. So the one that you're looking at now is the Tactical Operator Response Kit. That is the uh, kit that I showed you. This is the way that it comes if you order it from us, if you order it from North American Rescue Products. Great kit. No doubt about it. This is the Ocho kit. It is the same kit. It has about the same contents, but uh, this one is uh, designed for a little more civilian uh, application. Looks a little more low level civilian. Looks more like something you would have as a backpack gear or something you would uh, carry in your backpack. So um, if you're looking for one that's not quite as tactical looking or military looking, you'll see the contents are similar in there. You can see the way the uh, tourniquet comes from the manufacturer. Uh, so like I said, as soon as you get it, open it up, take that plastic off that tourniquet. It's not going to do you any good. It's just going to get in the way when the time comes. All right. Uh, the next thing I'll show you is the Eagle kit. So the Eagle kit is uh, a, also a great kit. It's a little more uh, compact. We sell it at sheepdogresponse.com. You can take a look and I'll show you here in a second. It's a great kit for a range belt. So you can look into this. It it holds about the same contents. It's just packed into a, a little bit denser package. So when it comes out, it tends to explode out all over the place. But if you're looking for a little more compact package way to hold it, you can see that the case is a little more svelvy and it has that big loop at the top, that grab pull loop that will open it and expose all the gear inside. That's a great kit. Some of our instructors prefer this kit. It's a great kit. Uh, um, but like I said, everything's tucked in. There's nothing on the lid flap when you open it up and it doesn't, it doesn't lay the gear out as nicely for you. Uh, but as far as laying the gear out, this is probably our highest end and most well-equipped, uh, uh, um, drop leg version of the IFAC. And this actually has enough for two operators. And you can see it's got a little, it's got two of everything. Uh, the shears are on the outside. It's, uh, also a, a great kit. Um, it, it might be a little bulky. It might be a bit much for the average uh, range goer or the average enthusiast. Um, this would, I would probably say this is more for, uh, for uh, law enforcement or EMS or somebody who knows that they're going to be on a range with more than one person and would want the extra equipment. But drop legs are bulky. Uh, I prefer to have something smaller. And now that they make uh, IFAX so compact and they make them so small and easy to carry, uh, the uh, drop leg version of them is becoming less and less popular. People kind of like the smaller, more compact version. And I agree. That's the one that I like. Uh, okay. So the last thing I'm going to show you is where you can find all this. So this is if you go to sheepdogresponse.com and you go over to the drop down menu, you click on that drop down menu and you go down to gear, expand the gear menu and go right down here to medical gear and supplies. And you're going to see everything that we talked about here today. All right, and a complete listing to include the tactical operator response kit. Uh, it goes for about $130, so $134. Also the Ocho IFAC, trauma shears, hyphen vents, everything you need to either purchase a ready-made IFAC or to assemble your own IFAC, and some people prefer to do that. Also, we also sell ready-made kits, IFAC resupply kits, so you can buy everything, all the guts to go into IFAC if you've used a portion of your IFAC or you want a different uh, carrier, you just want to put that vacuum sealed uh, package in a backpack and that's what you're going to carry. Whatever you're more likely to carry, that's what we're interested in you getting. We want to make sure that you have an IFAC and that you're, you're likely to carry it. So you decide what works for you, but please, please make sure that you have life-saving equipment uh, for you and your family and your friends. It's oh so important. It's one of the most important decisions of your life. All right. With that, we are going to wrap it up. That uh, that wraps up this installment. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, hit me at matt at sheepdogresponse.com or come check us out at our uh, website. And please, please, if you get the opportunity, come out and train. We're looking forward to training with you. As soon as we can get outdoors, we're going to get back to it. And I want you to stay sharp and stay ready. Thanks.